I'm perfectly fine with banning people who uh, suffer from gender dysphoria from purchasing weapons. That seems to me a pretty significant symptom of an underlying mental malaise. Let's turn to a recent kind of viral moment from Ben Shapiro that I want to discuss because this is impo an important intersection to me after, of course, the tragic Nashville shooting, which reportedly, I mean, we're not actually sure of this, but the shooter may have identified as transgender. Uh, now, a lot of people on the right are like, all of a sudden embracing what are essentially left-wing rhetoric and tactics and saying ban trans people from having guns, I guess. Take a listen to what Ben Shapiro had to say on his show recently. The gun control narrative is ridiculous in the sense that this person legally obtained the guns. I'm unaware what law would, would be passed that would have prevented this person from obtaining the guns. I'm perfectly fine with banning people who uh, suffer from gender dysphoria from purchasing weapons. That seems to me a pretty significant symptom of an underlying mental malaise that is going that could theoretically be a problem in terms of owning firearms but i don't think the left believes the same thing so jack i just hate this this very idea of taking individual actions and then de depriving an individual of their rights because of categorical associations right i mean this same logic could be applied to say uh, well, men commit the vast, vast majority of mass shootings. Should we ban men from owning guns? Of course not. Because self-defense, if you're a conservative like Ben Shapiro, and he said many times he believes that self-defense is a fundamental human right, and I agree. Well, then how could you possibly justify def um, taking away people's fundamental human rights on the basis of some group demographic they're a part of, irrespective of any individual evidence or any sign that they're actually dangerous as a person. That seems so wrong to me. That's such progressive logic. It is progressive logic. It depends on what your uh, goal is. So Brad, we're on this podcast and we're giving our honest opinions about what's going on in the world. And uh, we tend to lean right, but we're not trying to be more right wing than thou. That's not our goal. That's not what we do at based. We lean that way because that's who we are and that's what we believe, but that's not the goal. If you're Ben Shapiro or other pundits like them, that is a goal. So if the right is against trans people and, you know, uh, sort of blowing that up and, and flaming those flames, this is a golden opportunity to be anti-trans and to be contrarian in that I'm for gun control for this one group that we don't like to begin with. That's what he's doing. I'd debate him all day about that, but that ain't going to happen. But that's what he's doing. Logically, yes, you're absolutely correct. Look, most serial killers are white men. If there's a, uh, a bunch of serial killings going on, uh, maybe we should go profile all white men and figure out what. No, that's a destruction of civil liberties. It's an infringement of civil liberties. And most sane people wouldn't argue in favor of people. Civil libertarians wouldn't argue in favor of that. The idea that you should deny trans people from self-defense via the Second Amendment is not conservative at all. But if it's beating up on trans people at the same time, that's how he weaves that web they do. And it's shameful. And it's, it's just right wing disgusting. culture war boob bait bullshit. Yeah, and it makes me really well. mad because yep. it's a complete violation of their principles. Uh, and, you know, their argument is essentially, well, all transgender people are mentally ill and mentally ill people shouldn't be allowed to own guns. We could get into an intense debate about whether people who are successfully transitioned uh, to a new gender right on the surface, whether they count as mentally ill or not. But let's say I grant that premise. It is actually totally wrong to suggest that all mentally ill, quote unquote, people should not be allowed to own guns. We allow mentally ill people to own guns. I mean, uh, one in five Americans will experience a mental illness in a given year, according to the CDC. More than 50% will be diagnosed with a mental illness at some point in their lifetime. These are, I have, look, I have anxiety issues. I take Lexapro for anxiety. Is there a reason I shouldn't be able to own a firearm to defend my life? you know, from death threats I get from unhinged haters on the internet? Of course not. People have ADHD, mental health. That's a mental illness, right? Should they not be allowed to have a gun? Of course, there are specific disorders like schizophrenia that have higher rates of violence uh, as a correlation to them. But broadly speaking, mentally ill people are not more likely to commit violence. That's not factually or statistically true. They're much more likely to be the victims of violence, in fact. And so the same is true for transgender people. There's this notion that because there's been a couple high profile transgender shooters, supposedly in recent years, that uh, that there's some 
over representation of transgender people in mass shootings. But I saw a pretty comprehensive fact check using two different sources uh, proving that's not the case. Here's one of them. Newsweek reports uh, that are transgender people overrepresented in mass shootings. According to the Violence Project, which maintains a national database of mass public shootings dating back to 1966, 98% of mass public shooters are men. Only four shooters of the 191 mass shooters in the database are female, and in two cases, they acted alongside a man. The project focuses on mass shootings in public where four or more people were killed, not counting the shooter. By that definition, only Monday's shooting would be the only case of a shooting by a transgender person in that particular database. So, given that transgender people are about 0.6%, less than 1% of the population, you'd expect them to have about one incident in that database of almost 200. And they have about one incident in that database. So it's completely proportional to population. They have another one from the Gun Violence Archive, which I actually don't like the way they count mass shootings. It's very misleading. I've discussed it in the past. But that one similarly shows transgender people are represented at very small rates, even relative to their population size. So it's like just objectively untrue to suggest that transgender people are more likely to be mass killers. But here's what I would say even if they were, so what? You can't justify depriving individuals of their rights on the basis of collective demographic statistics. That same logic would, you could be used to say something I would absolutely oppose, ban black people from owning guns because they have higher rates of whatever kind of violent crime, according to some statistics. Ban men from owning guns because they commit 98% of mass public shootings, according to this source. It's like, that is not a logical path anyone who supports the Second Amendment or gun rights should ever want to go down, justifying depriving individuals of fundamental human rights based on broad assumptions about demographic groups. I just, you're, you're really letting your distaste and disgust for transgender people, which you're entitled to your opinion, but you're letting that override your basic fundamental political philosophy principles when it comes to the Second Amendment. And that's really disheartening to see. In the United States, American conservatism historically has mostly meant preserving the constitutional order. We have a constitution, we have a Bill of Rights, and they are intended to protect us all. That's what it meant to be a conservative for most of the history of the conservative movement in the country we're speaking in on this podcast. We've gotten to a point where certain segments of the right are like, eh, constitution, constitution, we're just going to be culture warriors and uh, we hate trans people, so let's take away their gun rights. Uh, We don't like these other things. Who cares about the first, second, tenth, any of the amendments? Uh, I feel like people like Ben Shapiro and some others at the Daily Wire more than him (laughs) lean into that instinct that's sort of new on the right um, post-Trump. Um, and this is just another example of it. We don't like trans people, trans but he's, are bad. he's usually better than some of the other people on the Daily Wire. And so I was he particularly is, disappointed to see this from him. Not here. Yeah. He is, this is a Matt Walsh is. type take. Uh, no, it, all that stuff drives me crazy. I'll debate any of those jerks anytime they want to. But like, that's if you're on the right, you're trying to make money and you're that's what they do. You're, you're applying logic, Brad. And I agree with everything you said, but this isn't about that. It's about more than that. It's about gross stuff nasty stuff. All right. Well, we'll leave it there, but we support self-defense for all humans, uh, frankly, because it's a human right. And so whatever your opinion is on trans issues should just not be relevant to that conversation. 